All right, family, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. We're back in our video. This one's gonna be about how to overcome your habitual, habitual sin. So if you just keep following yourself and consistent sin, man, this one's for you. Stay tuned, this one's gonna be a good one. And I just fell into sin, so I'm gonna tell you guys how I overcame it. And uh, one thing about sin, guys, one thing about sin, I'm gonna wish you the people in a bit, give me a second, but once you fall into sin, you want to instantly get back up because if you don't, you're just going to keep yourself down a deeper hole and it's going to be a lot harder to come out to climb out of that hole. Okay. So what I, what I mean by that. So once you become conscious and aware of the sin or whatever you're doing, that's, you know, against God. Okay. That's sin against your own body, stuff like that. Right. Once you become aware of that, like, don't just, okay, I'll just repent tomorrow. You know, I'll just pray or next week or next month. I'm telling you guys, once you become conscious of it, got to be instantly because you're only going to keep yourself down in a deeper pit. You're deep, like the more you sin, the more you keep yourself down in a deeper pit. When I say sin, I'm talking about willful sin because I'm aware of the scripture which says if a man says he's without sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay. I want to make sure, guys, the audio quality is good. Last time it was super blurry. I know the background's blurry right now. Um, once I start writing on it, it's like auto auto focuses. But what's up, guys? What's up? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. What up? What up? Yo. What's up, Jerome? What up, Naomi? What up, Brandon? Shalom. Also, I'm going to be looking for moderators, too. So if I see you in the comments a lot, I'm going to make you a mod. What's up, uh, JT Disciple? What's up, bro? What up? What up? What up, everyone? Joining peace and blessings. If you guys just tuning in, don't forget to like the video. Someone says, wow, the camera quality is crispy. Yeah, man, this camera goes crazy. <laughs> this camera goes crazy. I think it's a lens that really goes crazy, too. But let's go, let's go guys. Let's start the video. So the number one thing, guys... And you guys are popping in, man. All right, what's up? What's up? Someone says Sacramento, California. Okay, what's up? That's what's up. What's up, Divine Lee? What's up, E Rock? Peace and blessings to you too, bro. All right, let's get, let's go, guys. Number one thing, guys. Number one thing. If you just sin, if you just fell into your sin, okay, the first thing you want to do, okay, is you gotta confess, confess your sins, right? Confess your sin, whatever it may be, right? Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do, confess it, being accountable. Don't point the finger at someone, okay? Don't blame someone. Don't do that. Don't do that. You want to be a man, or if you're a woman, you want to be a woman, woman up. You know how I say man up? Uh, so you're a woman, woman up, okay? Don't blame nobody. Blame yourself, okay? You are account You have to hold yourself accountable for your sin, okay? So confess your sin, and then after you confess it to the most high, you want to forsake it, forsake yeah, okay, it says in Proverbs chapter 20, it's on Proverbs 28, verse 13 to 14. Okay, let's read the scripture for you guys real quick. It says that he that covers his, shin, his sins shall not prosper. Ooh. Whoever covers your sins will not prosper. So whoever tries to hide it, Okay, because you can't hide anything to God. God sees all. Okay, so whoever tries to cover his sins will not prosper or shall not prosper. But who, whosoever confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Okay, we all want the mercies of God, the grace of God. But God says that, but whosoever confess and forsake them shall have mercy. So if you want to obtain mercy to the Most High, you have to confess your sins to the Father. Okay, also you want to forsake them, repent. Okay, repent is not just you crying, God, I'm sorry, but you continue doing it. Repentance is a, the action of you were uh, stopping stopping whatever you were doing and not doing it again. The, the intention to never do it again. That is true repentance. Repentance is not when you just cry or you, you message other believers, you go to church and you tell them what's wrong, but you keep on doing it. That's not that's not true repentance. Okay. Uh, verse fourteen says, "Happy is a man that feared always, but he that hardened his heart shall fall into trouble, shall fall into mischief." Okay, so. But he that hardened, so this is like, the happiest a man that always fears, okay, that always fears the most high, okay, but he that hardened his heart shall fall into mischief, which means to fall into trouble, okay, so do not harden your heart. A lot of people in these last days, guys, their hearts are waxing cold, okay, you don't want to be like that, okay, so always keep that in mind, guys, confess your sin and forsake it, and like I was talking about in the last video I did, I was telling people, you don't want to be so quick to tell all your business to everybody, okay? Some things are just between you and the most high, 
Okay, now I know the Bible does say to confess your faults to other believers, but you have to use your discernment and be wise. You can't be telling every, your business to everybody because some people, they're going to use it against you. They're going to try to condemn you like five years later. Um, I know how this works. I know how it works. So some people, you some people, your, your brothers, you know, some of the people who are really rocking with you, uh, or you, you could, you know, you know, iron sharpens iron. So there's nothing wrong with that. But in these last days, guys, you got to be cautious, especially if you're a chosen one. You can't really be out here trusting everybody. You can't be out here having all these friends, okay? It's just, these are the times we're in, okay? So use your discernment, be wise to know who do you want in your circle, okay? So like I said, some people, guys, they're going to use it against you. That's just how the game goes in these times, man. These are some demonic times. Evil, guys, is good, and good is evil. That's what it seems like. It seems like if you, for, if you forsake your sins, you're the evil person. But if you stay in your sins... Everyone loves you. Everyone wants to be around you. I'm like, that's the times we're in. Everything, guys, is backwards, okay? So for, confess your sin and forsake it. The number two thing you want to do, actually, let me shout this person out. You left the super chat. Thank you so much, Cajun, for the uh, for the $10 super chat. Says, yo, all person will side. Thank you so much, bro. God bless you. All right, so let's make sure it zooms in so it focuses. All right, there you go. All right, confess your sin and forsake it. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to do better writing, guys. I'm going to do better writing for the next one. All right, so next one is you want to do some fasting and getting some deep prayer man and prayer okay and this is in um galatians up there right here there you go galatians uh, 16 to 17 okay so also it says this in the book of joel too i believe it's in joel chapter 2 verse 28 if i'm wrong i'll go find it right now but this is what god says to do uh, if, you, if you made a mistake, if you, if you did something wrong against them, I believe this is in chapter 28. Oh, no, no, that's not 28. All right. uh, this is what the Most High wants you to do, guys, when you, when you uh, call upon yourself to fast. All right, yeah, this is Joel chapter 2, verse 15, not 28. My fault. Okay, so it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call... An assembly, an assembly. Actually, that's not that's not the verse. Here, Joel. What the heck? Verse this again. Joel chapter. Oh, okay, it's chapter twelve. All right, my fault. My fault. All right. So this it says, it says, therefore also now says the Lord, turn ye to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna pin that verse in the chat so you guys can see this. Pin it for you guys real quick. Someone says we gotta stay prayed up. Yeah, we definitely do. We gotta stay prayed up. Definitely do. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh holy soul, appreciate you. I was not notified for this live late on. <laughs> I don't know why. I have no idea why. Uh where am I? Oh here. Okay, so uh, there you go, guys. It says that therefore also now says the Lord, turn ye into me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Okay, so I don't know why it's not okay. There you go. All right, so as you guys can see, confess your sin forsaken. Number two is fasting and prayer. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of fasting. And one thing I learned about fasting is that you're like putting a fire in your spirit, a fire in your soul. You're like igniting your spirit, okay? And the flesh is like getting weaker. The, the flesh is decaying. Okay, and what, what, I, what I mean by this is that you're now sharp, you're now strengthening your spirit. And you know, you know how hard it is to fast, especially if you're new to it. Now, kind of after me doing it for a long time, kind of gets easy. But in the beginning stages, to go 24 hours without eating, guys, this matrix that we're living in America, they're telling us that we have to eat breakfast, we have to snack, then we have to have lunch, then we have to snack again, then we have uh, uh, we have um, dinner, and then we have uh, a, a dessert. So that's they want you to the matrix wants you to eat six times a day. That's that's crazy. This is why we have a lot of people who are overweight. Okay, and so I noticed what, when it comes to fasting, it's very hard in the beginning stages, but I'm telling you guys, once you get over the first couple of days, it kind of becomes very easy. And you're gonna start to realize like, wow, I was eating all this all this time, like for what? Sometimes guys, we just eat because we're bored. Okay, some, some of y'all can relate to this in the comments. Sometimes we just eat because we're bored or because we're lonely, you know, or you know, we're just accustomed to op always opening the refrigerator, always opening the refrigerator. But I'm telling you guys, once you start to fast and get into some deep prayer, Okay, fasting and prayer is like a peanut butter jelly and sandwich, man. When you're fasting, and that's if you start to get weak, like especially if you go into your, you know, you go into 24 hours, okay, you're going to get into some prayer. Also, you want to be busy.
Okay, especially when you're in your first stages of fasting, you gotta stay busy. All right, and for people who ask me all the time, you know, Mark, what is a fast? How long do I fast for? Uh, what type? Can I drink water? Can I drink this and that? Okay, so according to the Bible, there's three types of fasts. Okay, so number one, there is a water fast. Okay, where you just drink water. Okay, and you don't eat. You don't eat nothing. You don't drink nothing else. You don't drink diet soda. You don't drink um, Pepsi Zero, uh, Gatorade Zero, and you know that the sugar-free drinks. You no, know, it's, it's completely just water, no gum, nothing else. Okay, that's a water fast. Number two is a dry fast. Okay, there's many people in the Bible who dry fasted. I believe Ahab, he, he did a dry fast after him and Jezebel did what they did. Okay, so Ahab, he dry fasted, and he and the dry fast is where you don't drink water, you don't consume no um, no beverages and no food. Okay, so it's completely, you're not eating nothing, you're not drinking nothing. Now, I don't recommend this for beginners. I recommend a water fast for beginners. So, you know, now now if you feel led to do that, then if God's telling you to dry fast, an A, by all means. But I feel like if you're just not starting now, it's good to just do a water fast, all right? But like I said, if you feel that in the spirit to do a dry fast, by all means do it. And then the, the number three uh, fast, according to the Bible, was called a Daniel fast, okay, where Daniel for 20, I believe it was for 21 days, he only ate vegetables, okay? He only ate vegetables. He didn't eat fruits, uh, no meals, okay? So that's a, that's a Daniel fast, okay? So that's up to you. You be, And fasting is between you and God. Don't go out here telling everybody, oh, I'm fasting this day, I'm fasting, you know, um, because God says that it's between. It's supposed to be between you and him so he can reward you, he can bless you. Don't seek the approval of man by telling them, oh, I'm fasting, and you have a sad face, and yeah, you know, you know, don't do not do that, because the Bible makes it clear in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, that God will reward you if you appear into man to fast and be boastful and, you know, try to seek um, rewards from them. So do it for God. Get into your prayer closet. Start getting some, some deep prayers. You know, uh, cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, cleansing me from all my sin, and get back up. Okay, God loves the humble people. The Bible even says that um, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud, okay? God's not dealing with the prideful people, the self-righteous, the arrogant, the overly religious. He's not dealing with them, okay? But he gives grace to the humble and to the meek. So we want to be striving, guys, to be humble. Understand that we all fall short, but it doesn't mean that we have to stay in our sin. It doesn't mean that we just, you know, oh, this is just who I am. Nah, man, we got to fight. We got to have the armor of God on, man, and fight against the schemes of the enemy, and don't be ignorant of the devil's devices, okay? So, uh, someone says factual. So I gotta say, hey, Rodrigo, I want to make you a moderator. Well, I don't know how to do it on the uh, streamyard. Hey, I, hey, after this video, uh, comment, comment on the video so I can make you a moderator. It's not letting me do it. That's not letting me do it on uh on here. Thank you so much, uh, Frank. Uh, Frank for the super chat says you are awesome, sir. Peace and blessing. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much for the support, man. God bless you. All right. So as you guys can see, we break down because I hate that I have to move so it zooms in. All right, anyways, so confess your sin to forsake it. Number two is fast and prayer. I wrote down the fast types, okay? Let me write this down for y'all. So there's a water fast, there's a dry fast, and then there's a Daniel, Daniel fast. All right, so there's three types of fast. Now, if I'm forgetting a different type of fast, feel free to leave in the comments and let me know. But these are the three fasts. When I read the Bible, it all came down. You know, and the most of the fast I've done was either a water fast or dry fast. I have not done a Daniel fast. The reason why is because if I'm fasting, I don't want to eat anything. You know, and now the reason why Daniel did his fast with just vegetables, because in the land he was in, they were eating the abominable foods like shrimp, lobster, crab, pork. So he let, he wanted to be obedient to God by keeping the commandments and keeping his laws by not eating the abominable foods. So he just ate vegetables. Okay. So that was the time he, well, he was in. Personally, me, I just mostly just do water fast or dry fast. Like I just prefer not to eat. But it's, you know, I guess, guys, up to you in the most high. All right. So let me see what you guys are saying. Someone says dry fast is where you feel your sins. Yeah, man. Yeah, dry fast is hard, man. Dry, dry fast is, is definitely advanced. So uh, that's why I tell people if you guys want, start out with like a water fast first. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Jeremy Turner says, thanks for the awesome content. This is surely needed. Thank you so much, bro. Appreciate you, man. Someone says 21 days. Yeah, Daniel did uh, the, the Daniel fast for it was 21 days. Yep. Now you could do you could do a Daniel fast for a day or two days. It doesn't have to be 21 days. Is I mean if you want, but you personally, like I said, guys, just where I'm at when, when it comes to fasting, it's usually just a water fast or dry fast. That's just me. Okay, if you're led to do a dry or Daniel fast, and you know do what you got to do. 
Someone says, Mark, do you watch Superbook? I have no idea uh, what that is. I don't know what that is, bro. Thank you so much, Emily Thomas. Appreciate you. Um, thank you so much, Le uh, Leanne says, what do you think of natural juice fast for beginners? Bless you for what you do. Um, it's okay to do. Um, personally, like I said, for me, when it comes to fasting, I just prefer either doing a water fast or a dry fast. Now, I know there are some people who do like uh, fruit fast and stuff like that. But personally, for me, I just prefer not to eat nothing. Or if I'm just going to consume something, it'll just be water. So that's just me. But if you feel led to do a juice fast, I mean, that's better than, you know, eating six times a day, you know. So I, I can't be against someone trying to fast whatever method they're doing. But I just know, according to the Bible, these are the three types of fasts. Okay. Oh, also, I see you guys, I see you guys saying, I want to become a mod. Okay, leave a comment after the video. If I see you on my comment slot, I'm making you a mod. I already see two people I'm going to make a mod. It won't let me do it through StreamYard. Yeah, it won't let me do it through StreamYard. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Jamie says, I wish I had more to give, but I want, wanted you to know that you helped me so much on my spiritual journey, and I appreciate the God in you. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. No, thank you, bro. It's all love, man. I appreciate you, man. Or it's just Miss Mason. Uh, whether it's a girl or guy, I appreciate you. It's all, all love, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, the love and support keeps me going, guys. Keeps me going. I wasn't even supposed to do a lot, guys. It's crazy, too, because my microphone that I ordered, the microphone right now is not as crispy. I'm using the camera microphone. And I went to the store. I went over, like, I was looking an hour to find a microphone. Target said they had it, and they didn't have it. Then I went to a different store. They didn't have it, even though the website says they had it. So I was just going around every night, and, you know, in me, I was like, bro, I'll just make a video tomorrow. But I'm like, nah, man. Like, once I make it, once I had it in me, guys, so I, I got to make a video, bro. Tell you guys, like, when I got my fire back, there's no way I'm just going to sit in the house all day and do nothing. Nah, I'm going to make a video, bro. If it's a short, I'm going to do something, man. Because God put me in a position, and he says that much is given, much is required. So if God has given you much, he requires much of you. No more time to be lazy, to be slothful. Absolutely not. Someone said a social media fast. Yes, absolutely. I feel like a lot of people are going to do that, too, as well. I, I, did social, I did an Instagram fast. Yes, that sounds weird to say. <laughs> I did an Instagram fast. Pretty much, I've been taking a break from Instagram, and I don't think I'm going to go back to so I don't think I'm going to go back to Instagram. I know, I know I have a lot of followers on there, so maybe like, I might, you know, if I'm led by the spirit to post something on there. But personally, all these social media, like, the only thing I really care for is YouTube. Like, that's the only thing I care about is social media is just too boring for me, man. It's way too boring. So let's get on with number three. Thank you so much, WT, for the uh, super chat, man. So, uh, says someone says, "Hey Mark, do you know to get over sexual sin?" Yes, this whole video is going over uh, sexual sin. This whole video is. This whole video is going to be talking about how to, how to overcome those sins, guys. All right, so let me go over number three. All right, so number three. This might be hard for some of you guys to do, but you have to do it because all stems down to your obedience. Okay, number three is giving up. The worldly, I don't know, world, uh, you know, ungodly, worldly, ungodly friends and family. I'm gonna explain this in the video, guys. Give me one second, okay? So I put, make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so giving up the worldly and ungodly friends and family. The reason why I say this is because you have some people that are in your life who are straight up demons and devils, okay? You ever notice you, you tell a certain person, you tell a certain, certain family member or friend that, hey, whatever thing that you're doing, like, I'm not trying to do it no more. Like, I'm good, like, you know, I'm trying to walk this, I'm trying to walk with God, you know? You pretty much letting them know, like, you're not trying to do that no more, it's respectfully. If I had a friend, like, that told me, like, they're not trying to do something and I was still doing it, I would respect it, like, oh, yeah, no problem, bro. You know, like, I would never want to be a stumbling block to a friend, to a family member, to anybody, but especially to a friend, someone who's close to me, someone who I call a friend or, you know, as a family, like my blood. I can't ever do that. But some people, the reason why they keep trying to tempt you and, and put you back into the sin that you already overcome or that you're trying to overcome is because the devil is using them, okay? You got to understand, like I said, guys, every time you give up a sin, every time, you know, whenever, every time you become free from the demons or the strongholds, there's going to be someone who's being used by the devil to get you to go back. And this person that's being used is going to be someone who you love the most, someone who you would never expect. 
Okay, someone who you used to hang out with every day because the devil knows he can't he can't just use I mean he could use a stranger, a random person. He could use that, he could use that. But if he uses someone that's very close to you that you have your know, love for in your heart, okay, it's gonna be very it's gonna be a lot harder to resist those temptations. Okay, so sometimes guys, you gotta walk this narrow path alone. That's why Christ says that only a few people are gonna find this road. Okay, so always keep that in mind. If you find you know some certain people, certain friends or family members. Who you told many times over and over again, like, I'm not trying to do this no more, you know, and they're not respecting you, okay, they're not holding, you know, they don't respect your boundaries, you know, they or they don't respect you as a person, you know, these snakes gotta cut them off, you gotta get rid of them, okay? Tom, a person, I'm telling you, you have to know this. The person who is consistently trying to get you to go back into that sin. Okay, even though you told them not to. Oops. Even though you told them not to, okay, this person that just called me is my mom. So I'm going to have to call her back. I don't know if you guys heard that. I don't know if you guys heard that. Thank you so much, Leak Studios. Uh, someone says, what are your thoughts? I said, you put thoughts? <laughs> y'all are, are funny, man. He said, what are your thoughts? So they give me the spirit. I have multiple videos on that. I got multiple videos on that. I mean, what are my thoughts? That's the truth. That's the Bible. What do you, what do you expect me to say, man? I don't know why you put that. I don't know why you put that. <laughs> oh, man, y'all are funny, man. Thank you so much, uh, C. Carter. He says, hey, Mark. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. All right. God led me to your videos when I was getting abused by my narcissist. Your videos through the spirit of God has kept me on the narrow path. God bless you, brother, and keep going. Thank you so much, C. Carter. Keep going. Keep going. Someone said, the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Yes, yes. Yep. Thank you so much for becoming a member, Miss James. Appreciate you. Someone says, I ordered a Bible on Amazon and someone stole my package. Dang, man. That's crazy. That's wild, man. Yeah, that could be another form of spiritual warfare. That could definitely be another form of spiritual warfare. Okay, so, yeah, guys. Even if the worldly, and like I said, this could be family, too. Don't be surprised if it's someone. Man, these markers don't last, bro. <laughs> these markers do not last. All right, so don't be surprised if it's a family member, too, who's being used, okay? Not just these friends, someone who you love the most, okay? Because the devil can use anybody. Remember, I told you guys all the time, and you have to know this, okay? If, you, if someone does not have the Holy Spirit, someone's not walking the, with the most high, if someone's not in the narrow path, they have the potential. They can be used by the devil, okay? They have potential to be an agent, okay? Whether they're working for the devil will, willingly or unwillingly, and you have to know this, okay? So always keep that in mind. Someone is not walking with God. Someone doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Be, be cautious of that. Okay, but so, so he said that he ordered a Bible on Amazon. And someone stole his package. That is wild, man. That could be. That could definitely be a form of spiritual warfare, man. And it's crazy too because that thief that stole it, he's gonna open it thinking like he just came up, that he just hit a lick. He's gonna open it. It's gonna be a Bible, bro. That that hey, maybe that could convict him. Maybe that was a part of God's plan. Okay. Maybe he can convict him, and now he actually reads the Bible, or maybe he wants to return it back, you know, and humble himself and repent. Like, but most like most people won't do that. But can you imagine you stealing something, and then you think you just came up, you think you just hit a lick, you think you just got big, right? You think you just got it, and you open the package and it's a Bible, bro. That would that would bring a lot of conviction. Like, dang man, that that would that would get me thinking. <laughs> Thank you so much, Edward Morris. Says, One thing I learned is that family members you grew up with. Or close with, they will try to plant seeds in you that your sin isn't bad and there's nothing wrong with it. Also, I appreciate the uploads on Wisdom Mark. Yeah, Edward, thank you so much, Edward. But yeah, that's true. That that happened to me. Yeah, that happened to me. Let's talk about this real quick. You're gonna have you're in that God's convict you of, and you try to escape. You're gonna have people not only try to get you to go back into it, but you're gonna have people tell, and they they won't even be. Some of these people won't even be doing this sin. But they are so accustomed to, you know, like I said, someone's not, it's not the Holy Spirit. They can be used by the devil. And they're so used to it. And, you know, they can be telling, oh, you don't have to get it up. That's, that's okay to do. You know, that's okay to do. It's fine. You know, if this is of God, you know, and these people are just being, they're just deceived. Okay. Like I said, understand this, guys. Some people are being used and they don't even know. And it could be someone who you love the most. So just because you have a heart for someone, okay, you have to uh, the Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things who can know it. So don't trust in your heart. Like the world tells you, just follow your heart. But that's not biblical at all. Okay, you want to follow the Holy Spirit. You want to follow Christ. Okay, following your heart is going to lead to to 
a, mis- a life of misery and pain and suffering. Okay, a lot of people say that, follow your heart, but that's not that's not in the Bible. So always keep that in mind. All right, so let's break it down for you guys. Confess your sins are forsaken. Number two is fasting and prayer. Number three is giving up the worldly and ungodly friends and family. And the Bible does say this in two Corinthians. I'll put that legal verse right here for y'all. I think it's uh six, yeah. 18. Okay, don't be unequally yoked. When you try to walk this narrow path, you don't want to be out here being unequally yoked, unequally yoked because especially when it comes to relationships. Uh, some, uh, I think it was C. Carter, sister who left the super chat, she said that she just left the narcissist relationship. You don't want to be out here. And like let's say, you believe in Jesus, you believe in uh, the Most High, Yeshua, okay? And the other person doesn't, you don't want to be yoked with that person, okay? It's gonna cause, that's going to cause a life of hell, man. You've been around being yoked with someone who's unrighteous, who's you know, who doesn't serve the Almighty. It's just we all live and learn, though. We all live and learn. Okay, so number four. Okay, number four is going to be give Okay, so number four is going to be. Give your life to Christ and surrender, okay? When you surrender, what does it mean to surrender? Let's read this Bible verse for you guys real quick. This is in 1 John chapter 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, 17. Right? Yeah. Okay, so it says, when you give your life to Christ, okay, those are all things you have to do. You got to get baptized. You got to repent of your sins, okay? Uh, but I want to read this real quick. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of God is not in him. Okay? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of God will abide forever. Okay? So when it comes to giving your life to Christ, you have to give up the world. You can't love Christ and love the world. You can't love God and love the world. You just can't, bro. You can't. So I feel like a lot of people... Their stumbling block on this walk with Christ, on this narrow path, is they can't give up the world. They can't give up what the world has to offer, okay? And the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world. And every time I say that, there's always someone who's, like, very emotional, like, Mark, don't say that. Don't, don't say that. But here, let me tell you what the Bible says. Every time I say it, someone gets all their feelings, all right? This is what God says, all right? So you tell God, you tell God that, you know, don't, don't say that. <laughs> I'm just reading what the Bible says, okay? And I'll make sure I'll, I'll leave it in the comments, too. This is in 2 Corinthians Chapter 4, verse 3 to 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4 says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Okay, so yes, guys, Satan, the God of this world, has blinded the minds. All right, this is a the reason why when you give your life to Christ, certain people don't really like you no more. It's because the Holy Spirit in you is bothering, is aggravating their demons, okay? And Satan has them blind. Satan has them in darkness, so they're unable to see. The Bible even says that if a man walk in darkness, if a man hate his brother, he's in darkness even until now. I'm going to read that verse, too, but I'm going to make sure I leave this comment or this Bible verse for you guys so you guys can see it in the comments. I don't know if it puts the whole thing, because this is a long verse. Here, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll uh, just put the verse, and you guys can look it up if you guys want. I don't want to, uh, yeah, you want to get like 200 characters on here. Man, the comment section is lit, man. Y'all, lit in the comment section, man. I got to scroll all the way down. Thank you so much for the super chat. I got to scroll all the way down. Hey, where'd it go? Up okay, here. That's that's the verse where it says that um, the devil is the god of this world, okay? I gotta make that very clear because some people they be in their feelings every time I say that. Like, that's the truth, guys. Think about it. Think about it. You have people who sell their souls, right, to be a famous and celebrity. Who are they worshiping? Who are they bowing down to? Who are they praying to? It's not the it's not the God of Israel, okay? There is that's the devil, bro. So please understand that. Okay, so people worship Satan, people bow down to him. Okay, people love the devil. I mean, just look at the world we live in. They're pushing the LG on the children. Okay, that's the most demonic thing ever, bro. You're pushing it on innocent children. That's who they're targeting. And they'll even let you know. Those members, you know, not all of them, but some of those members of that community, they'll say it prideful. Okay, it's the reason why they have pride. 
month. Okay, it's a reason why I'm just going against the algorithm. That's on. Okay, it's a reason why. It stands for pride, and we all know pride comes before the fall. That's why Babylon. You know, you see how Babylon in America is pushing that heavenly. That's why we see Babylon falling. We see we see it within our own eyes. Those who are awakened can see it. Okay, so someone says the, the board is blurry. It's not blurry. It's just that I have it autoly focused because I don't have someone recording. I don't know why. Okay, there you go. I don't have someone recording, like, you know, manually doing it. So I have to, like, move out the way. So every time I go over it, for those who are just now joining, like, if I go, if I put my face in, right? So my face kind of blurry. So it zooms on my face, so it's more focusing. I move out. Boom. But I can fix that. If you guys don't like it that way, I can, I can fix it. So anyways, for those who just joined, confess your sin and forsake it. I went over uh, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 to 14. Number two is fasting and prayer. And I went over uh, water fasting, water fasting, dry fasting, and the Daniel fast. And this is in uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 12, says, uh, coming to the most high with fasting and weeping and, you know, coming with humility. Number three is giving up the worldly, ungodly friends and family. And I put 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 18, because you got to understand, when you unlikely yoke with someone, it's just going to cause a life of pain and misery, Okay. Number four is give your life to Christ and surrender. Don't be, let me put that, don't be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm. And I, for this tradition, I told you, I was saying that whenever you fall into a sin, whenever you, you know, become aware, okay, this is, you know, because sometimes we're not aware of the sin that we're doing. We're not always aware of it, okay? And, and see, when God makes you aware, when God's speaking to you, when God's letting you know, okay, you know, he's, he's giving you grace and mercy, but now that's, that's when it's time to repent. Now it's time to seek forgiveness and not just cry in a corner and have the intentions to do it again tomorrow, okay? So always keep this in mind. When God is letting you know the sin that you're doing, okay, that's going to, you know, some sins can lead you to hell, okay? You're all, the Bible says that, um, it says that uh, if you're sinning against your own, let me read that. I don't want to say that wrong. Uh, let me just read this one. This one just makes it very, very simple. It makes it very, very simple. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, okay, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor abusers of themselves and mankind, okay, nor effeminate, nor thieves, nor convenious, nor drunkards, nor robbers, nor exterminators shall inherit the kingdom of God, okay? So that makes it clear. Those people who, who do those acts and they don't live a life of repentance or are comfortable in their sins or are comfortable in their pleasure, they're going to go to hell. They're not going to, they're not going to make it to the kingdom. And whenever I bring out these scriptures, the demons, the false prophets, the false teachers, the, the teachers who have the itching ears, okay, who, who love to tell you the sweet little lies, they get mad. <laughs> they get mad. And let them get mad because that's what the truth does. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, okay? So if you're out here doing what 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10 says, okay, you're not going to inherit God's kingdom. Bible is very, very simple. It's, when I read it the, the first time, it was very, very simple. The basic construction before leaving earth. The reason why people complicate it is because they want to stay in their sin. Okay, They want to stay in darkness. That's the reason why. And speaking of darkness, I did say that I'm going to go over this verse right now. And so let me, uh, ooh, ooh. Let, me make, make, let me make sure I said this verse real quick. Hold up, hold up. And this is a good one. And it's like no one's really talking about this verse in today's age. But this is happening. This is the age of the cane. The rise of the cane, the spirit of cane. You all know what I'm talking about? It's out here, man. And for those who got the super chat, give me one second. Let me, let me say this verse real quick. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 says, He that says he's in the light and hate his own brother, he's in darkness even until now. He that love his brother abide in the light, and there is no indication of stumbling in him. But he that hate his brothers in darkness and walk in darkness, and know not whether he goeth, because that darkness has blinded his eyes, okay? So the people who hate you for following Christ, the people who hate you for doing the right thing because you gave your life to him and you did nothing to them, they just, for whatever reason, they just have some hate for you, okay? It's because they're in darkness, okay? They're in Satan's kingdom. Satan has them in a chokehold. Satan has them in a stronghold, okay? That's what it is. That's the reason why they hate you. So always keep that in mind. 1 John chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Once you have a spiritual mind, which is life and peace, according to the Romans chapter 8, you're going to understand things a lot better. And that gives you the peace. Okay, It gives you the peace. It gives you the understanding, okay, he, he's only hated me because the devil hasn't blinded. He's in darkness. So you're not going to be emotional. You're not going to be offended because you understand this is all spiritual. Okay? But to be carnal-minded is, is death. 
So you don't want to be out here with the carnal mind. Someone says psych psychedelics are demonic. Oh, absolutely. Shrooms, acid, LSD, all demonic. That all opens your vessel for demonic possession. Absolutely. Yeah, people tell me that, um, oh no, you know, I could do shrooms. Guys, you don't want to be doing that, doing that stuff, man. Definitely don't want to be opening your vessel for demonic possession. That new age spirit, man. That new age spirit got a lot of people. Just be sober, guys. Be sober and watchful. We don't want to be doing, I see some people saying, oh, we could do that. Nah, man. I would never promote that on this channel, doing drugs and stuff. Definitely not. All right, so let's go with number four. Someone says, why do people choose to be atheists? That's their belief system. Some people, they, some people don't want to believe in God because when you believe God, it comes now, you, you have to change, you know? You're not going to be able to do the stuff you used to do. And they ain't trying to the state. They don't, they don't want to repent. Okay, there's even some dude. You got some of you guys know who I'm talking about. Uh, he allowed his wife to get banged out by, you know, some other dude, and he allowed it. He's making money off of it. And they're both, you know, quote unquote atheists. Okay, but if he was on God's side, he wouldn't be able to do that. So some people they become atheists, they become unbelievers because they're they're okay with you know selling their soul for money. So and they know that if you have a if you have a, a relationship with the Father, you're not going to be doing those stuff like that. But some people they love money so much that they'll sell their soul, sell their wife out, sell their children out just to get to that bag, just to get to that bag. Yeah, y'all saying his name in the comments, <laughs> but yeah, man. All right, number uh, number five. Number five is because I was talking about these demons, right? So, when you, when you remember when you turn when you just sin, you have you have to do this. You have to, you guys. Okay, so you gotta put on the full armor of God and be ready. Okay, the devil does not want you leaving this kingdom. The devil does not want you escaping the sin. He doesn't want that. And this is the reason why God says, "Let me let me get this verse for you guys real quick." This is Ephesians chapter six, verse. Wait, right? Yeah, verse uh, chapter six, verse ten to twelve. It says, "Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord." And this is for all. Well, actually, I have this one to read in the next one. Give me a second. So it says, Father, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, so remember, we're not battling against human beings. We're not battling against humans. We're battling against the demons in them. Okay, the spiritual wickedness in high places that are using them. Okay, also, this is a verse that I want to read too, because a lot of people don't know this verse correlates with uh, the Ephesians in the Old Testament. That's why when people say, oh, it's the Old Testament, that's not that's not relevant today. When people talk like that, they're just deceived, okay? So Isaiah chapter 59, verse 15 to 17 says, Yea, truth failed, and he that depart from evil make himself a prey, okay? He that depart from his sin, his wickedness, makes himself a prey in the spiritual realm. So those demons, they're going to turn up, okay? Let me read this again. Yea, truth failed, and he that depart from evil make himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it, depleted, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation into him, and his righteousness it sustained him. For he put on the righteousness as a breastplate, and the helmet as a salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloth. Okay, so let me uh, leave this in the comment section so you guys can read it. Now, this, I'm only going to be able to put verse 15 because... You can't, you only could put like 200 characters in the comments. So let's see if that leaves the whole thing. Okay, so there you go. So I can only leave the first verse. So it says, you guys can read it. Someone says, wait, I, I gotta read this. Someone says, quit weed. Use CBD to get yeah fix. Stop getting high. If you die in sin, you will burn for eternity. Yeah, so let me make this very clear too, because I see a lot of people telling me this. Oh, Mark, like I stopped, I stopped smoking weed, but I smoked CBD. Okay, we're not supposed to be smoking anything first and foremost. Okay, 
So always keep that in mind. We're not supposed to be smoking. And I know CBD does have its benefits. Okay, CBD, you don't get high. Okay, so like if you want to eat the gummies and stuff like that, that's cool. But it's nothing should be smoked. Nothing. Okay, always keep that in mind. And same thing with, with THC gummies. Some people might try to justify that. You can get high off THC uh, edibles. So avoid THC in general when it comes to using it to get high. Now, I know God created the plants for all for a reason, but none of it was to get high and to defile your temple. Okay, so let's make that very clear. Now, if you're using CBD outside of like smoking it, because I, I know, remember the double peak crumps everything God has created. Okay, now, the, now you have CBD weed. There was no such thing as CBD weed 10 years ago. But you see how the devil corrupts things? So nothing is created to be smoked. All right. Yeah, someone said weed is a gateway. Yeah, I have a friend. Okay, I had an old friend. This is back in the days. And I noticed that every time he would, he would um, I guess, speak in code. He would do weed, right? I'm just speaking code. Or do tree. All right. Every time he would do that, a couple months, a couple weeks later, he would start doing other stuff, other harder drugs. Okay. Now, I know not everyone, not everyone has a weak spirit, so they won't, you know, not everyone will do that. But, yes, it could be a gateway to other drugs, to other spirits. Okay. So, yeah, that, that is very true. That is very, a lot of people don't want to admit that. And I, I used to be one who didn't want to admit that because I never did that type of stuff. But I've seen it with other people. Okay, I've seen it with other people. It opens up doors for other spirits. So, yes, absolutely. Always keep that in mind, man. Always keep that in mind. Like I said, guys, don't be lukewarm, man. Don't, don't be out here lukewarm. Love, you have to love the truth. You have to love the truth. Okay, don't be – I know a lot of people – Y'all don't, don't like the truth because it's darkness. Okay, that's what it is. Satan's kingdom has been blinded. But yes, nothing was created to be smoked. I stand on that. People talk, oh, Mark, I'm unsubscribing. Unsubscribe, go away. If you don't want the truth, then why are you here? Why are you here? Okay, this is a truth channel. It, it offends you, gets you in your feelings. You're not trying to change. That's what my channel, I want to resemble my channel for my, all my videos, okay? It's to lead people to repentance. If you're not trying to do that, I don't know why you're here, okay? I don't know. You got to ask yourself that. Thank you so much, Nick, for the Super Justice Mark. Come through with the consistent content. Yeah, I got you guys. So tomorrow, I'm taking my, because um, my wife's pregnant, we have to go to the doctors. So I might not be able to make a video tomorrow, guys, unless we get back in time. Unless we get back. I don't know how long it's going to take. Last time, it took two hours. So I'm not sure how long it will take. But thank you so much, guys, for leaving the Super Stickers. All right, let's get on with number with number six. Oh, actually, let me do the verses so you guys can see it. So Isaiah 59. 15 to 18, and then I put um, adhesions, yeah. All right, so you guys want to look at the verses? Go ahead. Our right, number six. Okay, speaking of, uh, speaking of number six, all right, so I told you guys, put on the armor of God, right? So we can fight against the wilds of the devil. And it's not only, it's not only the devil you're going to fight against. You're also going to fight against your flesh. But like I said, you're not going to be fighting against your flesh if you're feeding your spirit. Because when you're feeding your spirit, you're igniting your spirit, and your spirit is decaying. Let's read this verse for you guys real quick. Speaking of that verse, let me read. Uh, I don't think I read this verse yet. Yeah, I don't think I read it yet. So let me read this one for you guys. So when I talk about when you feed your spirit, um, this is a good verse I can keep. I can uh, stay in your mind too as well. So it says, "This I say then: Walk in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh." For the flesh lusts against the spirit, okay, and the spirit against the flesh. Okay, so always keep that in mind. The more you're staying in your sin, let me, just, let me get close to the camera. The more you stay in your sin, the more you stay in your flesh, it is now going to rage war against your spirit. So you have to you have to know this. I wish I knew this five years ago. Okay, it would have made this walk a lot. Now, now I know now it makes it easier because whenever I find myself overindulging in the flesh activities, okay, I understand that my spirit is going to get weak. Okay, now, my, now the flesh is going to overtake. Okay, and on this walk, this is going to happen to the best of us. It happens at all. But having wisdom, okay, let me, let, me, let me shout out wisdom real quick. This is in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 to 9. Okay, uh, this is in, yeah, 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 right? Okay, so it says, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when I do embrace her. Okay, she shall give thee a head of ornament of grace. A crown of glory she shall deliver unto thee. Okay? So, yes, guys, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and all that get in, get understanding. Okay? She shall give you a crown of grace. Okay? An ornament of grace. So, always keep that in mind. Wisdom was the one that let me know. You know, before I even knew about Galatians, before I knew about Galatians 5, verse 16 and 17, but wisdom was speaking to me, letting me know that if I keep overindulging the flesh, I'll never have room for my spirit to grow, to elevate. 
Because, you know, that's why the Bible says you can only serve one master. You either serve your flesh or your spirit. You can't choose both. You can't choose, okay, I'm going to serve my flesh today, but tomorrow I'm going to serve my, my spirit. It doesn't work like that, okay? Either one is going to overpower the other. And the more, the more you, you, the more you, it's like a, just like a plant, just like a seed, okay? The more you water and plant and, and nurture and, and take care of your spirit, the more it grows. The more it grows to a big old tree. If I lived in my old house, I can show you guys a tree, but I don't, I don't live by trees right now. <laughs> you know, the more you keep watering that flesh, which is just going to die eventually, Right? Keep on watering, keep on, you're nurturing it. You're nurturing death, pretty much, okay? You're going to find yourself more, you know, now it's harder to, to escape that. Okay, so like, like the scripture says, you're going to find yourself, um, you know, the, the flesh less against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, okay? So always keep that in mind when it comes to, yes, yeah, sometimes it could be the devil, but sometimes you're just overdosing the flesh. Sometimes it's not always the devil, sometimes it's yourself, okay? So let's put on the, the next one. It says... Next one is, I'm going to explain this to you guys. I'm going to explain what this means. Okay, so let me make sure it's clear for you guys to see. All right, let me move that real quick. All right, so make sure it's clear to see. Boom, okay. So number five was put on the armor of God and be ready. Number six is let the Holy Spirit, wait, that's not, okay, there you go. Let the Holy Spirit take over in obedience. Let me, let me explain this, guys. Let me explain the power in obedience. Even though you might have fell short, even though you might have made a mistake, you might have done something you, you've done and you didn't do, when it comes to or confessing your sin and forsaking it, that all just means repent. That's all what it means, okay? That was the first thing I went over. All right, so when you let the Holy Spirit take over, you got to be obedient, okay? So when God's telling you, God's telling you to confess your sins and forsake it. He's telling you, okay, you know, son, daughter, got to start doing some prayer. All right, got to start doing some fasting. Well, you, son, daughter, you got to give up the, the ungodly friends and family, okay? The, only, the ones that are trying to keep you in darkness, you got to give that up. When God's telling you, give your life to Christ, you have to surrender, okay? No more being lukewarm. When God's speaking to you, telling you to put on the armor of God so you can fight against the schemes of that when God's speaking to you and you're being obedient, man, you're not your flesh is done. Okay, it's done, it's finished. What I, what I, what I mean by that is that you're no longer gonna think about sinning, you're no longer gonna think about you're no longer gonna have that carnal mind because the Holy Spirit has over has over flooded your life, has taken over, has activated, and now you're no longer lukewarm and you're walking in your calling. I'm telling you, when you're walking in your calling, bro. Last year when I was making a video every single day, I wasn't even thinking about the flesh, but when I got comfortable. You know, after I left my vacation uh, on my birthday uh, a couple months ago, then I got kind of comfortable. See, and if I was just back to making meals every day after I came back from vacation, now you don't got to work all the time. Sometimes we can take a vacation. Sometimes we need a break. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we can go to the, the, the woods, the mountaintop, just like Christ, and just stay in prayer. There's nothing wrong. This is me. I'm not saying that you got to do it every day. But when you keep your mind on, on the kingdom and you're focused, you've got a mission, you got a purpose, bro, you're not going to even think about sin. Because all day you're too busy working. Even my life, guys, and I'm not, I'm not speaking to myself to boast myself. I'm letting you guys know this. When I'm working all the time, I don't have time to, for myself. Like, literally, all day is just content, making content. Like, this is my life. <laughs> this is literally my life. So, and I'm glad it's my life because it keeps me centered because I got to practice what I preach. I can't get on here and, and be doing op the opposite and get on here and preach the word. That'd be fake. You know, that, that'd be totally fake. So, if this helps me. You guys, you guys showing love, you guys showing support, it helps me, okay? Not only, of course, God helps me too, but the love I get, even the haters, the haters keep me going too. You know, the demons, people who hate the comments and scoff and troll, they actually keep me going too. They don't even know that they're being used for the greater good. They keep me going because I got something to prove. I got, I got, I got, you know, souls to win over for God's kingdom. It is not for my own glory. This is for God's glory. That's why I always give all praise to the most high for using my vessel to reach you guys, okay? So overcome your sins, stay busy. Okay? Let the Holy Spirit take over, stay busy, stay active, uh, find something that's going to keep your mind centered on elevating, on growing, on seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness daily. Okay, Find something. Now, it's not everyone's calling to be a teacher, to get on YouTube and make content. That's not everyone's calling. And that's okay. God has different gifts for different people, Okay, different talents for different people. There's nothing wrong with that. But I found mine. I finally found my calling. You know, in my life, guys, a little quick testimony. I always love to help people. Now, it wasn't towards that because I didn't know. I didn't know about the Bible and none of that stuff back in the days. I didn't know anything, but I always love to help people. Like whatever type of information, knowledge I had, I love to share. Some people, guys, in today's age, they have the information, they have the knowledge, the wisdom about certain subjects, but they won't give it to you. 
you know, because they're selfish. But I was never like the type of person. Whenever I I got something or I had something on me, you know, when I was down to my last dollar, I always I always helped. You know, gave gave me because that's the type of person I am, and God saw that. So, and even though I I didn't think I could be on here and preach the word because I'm not a smart individual, I'm really not. You have scoffers making fun of me. My grammar is not the best. My speech is not is not the best. You know, but God saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. It's just like how Moses. Moses had a stuttering problem. Even Moses told God, hey, when God was calling him to be a leader, to lead the, to lead the Israelites, he told God, you know, I can't do this. Well, you know, why are you choosing me? And God had let him know, you know, I created your mouth. Even though you have, you have a stuttering problem, I created your mouth, uh, your mouth. And God used him. So it's like God always uses the people who people you who, who never expect. All right. I didn't expect to do this. You know, I wasn't a religious person or, you know, church goer. That, that wasn't me. That, that wasn't me. But God saw something in me. And this is a fact that every day guys are going on YouTube. I see a comment saying, oh, Mark, you helped me a lot. Thank you so much. God bless you. Stuff like that. Like that, that helps me. It helps me keep me, keeps me going. And this is why we don't want to forsake, you know, we don't want to forsake, you know, um, encourage the other believers, you know, you know, iron sharpening iron, you know, you know, keeping uh, fellowship, not just fellowship, but just communicating with other believers, not always in real life, but just the comments, man, just the comments. It keeps me going. And I also encourage you guys, if you guys have any, any friends, and mean, family members, believers in Christ, or uh, and all that, right? If you have that, I recommend you text them, you hit them up, or DM them. You know, everything social media nowadays. Or if you see them in person, hey, ask them how you doing. You know, uh, thank you. I hope everything's. You know, just the, the small things in life. The Bible even says that. Here, let me find this verse for you guys real quick. I believe this is in Pro- Proverbs has all the wisdom. That's why I be telling you guys start a. Uh, Start uh, reading the book of Proverbs if you haven't already. Okay, this is in uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. It says, pleasant words are like as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Let me leave that in the comments so you guys see that. So just when people leave that, like that love type of comment, like it really is, you all don't know how much that does. You know, there's a lot to someone's soul, to their spirit, just by being nice and kind, you know, showing love, showing appreciation. Here, then the comment section is lit, man. Y'all keeping it lit. I appreciate all y'all showing love, man. Someone says Christmas is a pagan holiday. Yes, I'm aware of that. Okay, so there you go. It says pleasant words are as a sweet as, as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Yes, man. So, you know, if you guys want to show me love to my ministry, just hit the like button, man. It's free to do that. It's free to do that. As I'm out here sweating, bro, I'm going to drink some water real quick because, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water real quick, man. Y'all get the likes up. Last time I did a live last week, it was like for like an hour and a half. How long am I on here now? For about almost an hour. Man, my throat was hurting for like a couple of days, man. I wasn't drinking the water. <sighs> All right, so as we see, back to it. Let the Holy Spirit take over. You got to be obedient. Don't out here believe in these false doctrines saying that you can live however you want. Um, Jesus died on the cross so I could just, you know, live in sin. The Bible says, shall we sin because grace be abound? God forbid. Okay? So always keep that in mind. This is all words. This is all the narrow path is all about, man. And this is one thing I'm learning about God just recently. This is what it's all about. And I'm going to continue pushing this right here. Let me move this so y'all can see it. Let me move this so y'all can see it. So this is what it's all about, guys. If you guys want answers, solutions to your problems, I'm telling you, bro. This right here, like, I wish I could just erase this whole board and just put this whole board, because it all correlates to obedience, okay? All y'all struggling with sin. All y'all looking for answers. You're looking for clues. You're looking for whatever you're looking for. You're looking for a sign, okay? You're going to get all what you want from being obedient. And the Bible says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Okay, so are you delighting yourself in the Lord? Or are you delighting yourself in the pleasures of this world? Or are you delighting yourself in your sin? Okay, so, and if you are, if you are, okay, remember, we all once were, let's not be hypocrites. We all once were, delight, we all once once deceived, okay, and ignorant. So now we came into the knowledge of the truth. Now we accepted Christ. Now we got Now we got to repent, okay? Now we got to repent. Now we have to surrender. Okay, this video is going to really help someone, man. Like I say, guys, let the Holy Spirit take over. Got to be obedient. And yes, being obedient is not easy. And the reason why I say it's not easy because like the flesh is going to rage war against you. Your friends are going to call you weird and crazy. You know, you're going to find yourself alone. You're going to find yourself in an isolation season. Why you see all the people you used to hang out with, they're all living their best life, turning up. 
You're, you're suffering for righteousness sake. But best believe, guys, there's a reward in doing that. Even though you might not see it at the moment, you, will not, you might go years and not see it. But I'm telling you, all those who suffer for righteousness sake, okay, you're going to receive a reward. Keep going. Keep going strong. Keep going hard. And as you're doing this, you're going to have demons and devils that take you out, man. Take you out the narrow path. They go in the path they're on, that broad, wide gate, which leads to destruction. You're going to have many of these demons and devils doing that, these evil spirits, okay, these children of the devil. So keep in mind of that. All right, thank you so much, spiritual soccer team. The great says, God bless you, Ak, for everything you do. The presence of the most high uh, permeates through, throughout you. Thank you so much, man. See, this is what I'm telling you guys. This is what I'm telling you guys, bro. The kind words, bro. Is that sweet to the soul? Let me read that again. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bone. So when you say kind things to people, guys, that the Bible says that it's, a, it's sweet to the soul. And also, I'm a firm believer in what you put out into the world comes back into you. That's why I'm always kind to people. I always show love. I, even when they're not showing love to me back, it's all good because I understand how, how it works. What you put out into the world comes back into you. The Bible says, reaping what is sowed, the world calls it karma. But the Bible just says, you reap what you sow. So if you're out here being kind to people, you know, showing love to people, that's going to come back to you. You know, and now, of course, you're going to have the haters. You're always going to have enemies. Christ, a man without sin, had haters. So, yes, you're going to have haters. You're going to have people who just are just so negative. They're just going to hate you for no reason, bro. A man without sin, they hated him. So, they're going to hate you, too. But for the most part, you're always going to have more people showing love. Okay, so always always understand that. In life, you reap what you sow. If you're out here being negative, toxic, being on demon time, you're going to attract other demons. You're going to be, you know, find yourself in a dark pit. Okay? Find yourself, you know, away from those lessons of the most high. Someone said, this screen is blurry. You just now joining? So, I, I, all right, next video, guys, next time I do that, I want to, the reason why I did that is because the face is super crispy. So, but if I do like this, it doesn't get as crispy with my face when I do that. So I got to, all right, for those who just now joining, check out the screen. Okay, let the Holy Spirit, that's what I went over this right now. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Obedience. I know this might be hard for some of you guys, all right? I know this might be difficult. But this is the answer to everything on this narrow path, your obedience. Let me close the window because we're doing some work out there. All the answers and questions you have in life when it comes to God. All right, this is it. This is it, guys. This right here. Literally, guys, when you, like, I would recommend, you know how you, when, you, when you brush your teeth in the morning, like, you know, you, you know like the mirror you're looking at, get a marker. This is like a dollar or two hours. Get a marker and put on the board obedience. Like, literally, meditate on that and that's what number seven is going to be okay so hopefully you guys can see the board now i'll give you guys like five ten seconds so you guys could for those who are just not joining all right so if you guys haven't already someone says the screen is fine it's how the camera works exactly a lot of people don't know that uh caitlin exactly thank you so much thank you so much uh love you my g for, for your family baby thank you man man that's a blessing thank you so much bro i appreciate you man Constantino, thank you. All right, number seven is, man, this marker is almost done too. This is crazy, man. I have extra, yeah, I gotta get another one. I have extra in the closet, but geez, man, these markers suck. Also, if you guys want more live streams, I could do one once a week. Just let me know. Just let me know if you guys want the, the video formats I do. Okay, so meditate. I'm going to go over some scripture for this one too. Okay, I'm going to go over some scripture for this one. All right, so meditate on the word and the law. Okay, a lot of times, guys, we're meditating. Uh, for, those who are, for those who are in the flesh, those who are serving the flesh, you're, you're meditating on the next sin you're going to commit. Okay, you're, med you're meditating on fleshly things. So you want to meditate on the word of God. Let's go over this. Uh, Pharaoh says, I don't, know, I, don't think, I don't think I pinned this. It says, since I've been on this journey, I've been dreaming about demonic stuff. I use your Bible verses because I slept peaceful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. That's what's up. That's what's up. I was going to make more of, the, uh, more of those too. It takes a lot of time to make that video. It takes a lot of time, but uh, that's a blessing, man. That's what's up. Thank you so much, Roar. For those who don't know, don't, don't know what she's talking about. I have an eight-hour-long Bible video. It's on my playlist section on my uh, page. 
I did an eight hour video going over Bible scriptures. I might make another one for that too, guys. For like when it comes to like spiritual warfare, like verses for that. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys want to look, look forward to that. But hey, that's what's up. Yeah, if you guys get an attack, guys, that's what I do too. Before you sleep, just play Bible verses. Just play like, you know, like there's like there's other videos too you can check out. This doesn't have to be mine. But you can just go to uh, YouTube and type in like meditating on God's word or like um uh, uh, verses on pr on prayer or like you know stuff like that whatever you're led to and just have it played on all night I'm telling you that that definitely helps too someone says but Christians think meditating is evil it's because they're deceived whenever I talk about meditation the, yeah these these the, the Bible calls them unlearned okay they're unlearned they're babes in the faith so they automatically think it's evil okay now yes meditation can be evil if you use it the opposite way because the devil corrupts everything you know that God wants us to do. So we're supposed to be meditating on the word, okay? Meditating on the word of God. But those Christians who say, oh, meditating is evil, it's demonic, they're unlearned, they're babes. And the Bible is a Bible verse. They're so quick to like go over Bible verses that say it's demonic, but they're not, they're not quick that the Bible says to be uh, slow to speak, okay? Because they're not quick for that. So yeah, when those Christians say that, I uh, just go away. <laughs> just go away, bro. Go away, man. They're babes, they're unlearned. I know that unlearned people, they have the most to say. The people who actually like have knowledge and wisdom, they're more like slow, slow to speak, you know. But the people who are unlearned, people who don't really know much, people who just became a Christian a year ago, they just have the biggest mouth. Have y'all notice that? Like we got, we don't want to be operating in pride, guys. Don't operate in pride and self righteousness. That, that's not good. But I want to read this verse for you guys, okay? It's in Psalms. There's multiple verses I want to go over, but I want to go over this one first, okay? Actually, because a lot of people already know this verse, I'm gonna go over this verse first. This is in uh. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. It says, okay, have I not, actually, this is not the verse. <laughs> Wait, is it? Yeah, this is, not the... <laughs> this is not the verse. I'll read it, I'll read it. It says, have I not commanded thee, be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wherever that goes. This is not the verse here. I think it's in Josh 24, verse 15, right? Please, please, please. No, it's not. Uh, what verse is this in? Uh, oh, okay, okay. All right. This is why it's good to, yeah. Oh, okay, so I said verse 9, it was verse 8. All right, my fault. Okay, so it says, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that they may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success, okay? So the book of the law, okay, Christians also tell you that the law is done away with. They tell you that meditation is demonic, the law is done away with, okay? They, they're unlearned. That's, that's what they are. It's the Bible calls them. So the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. The Bible says that God does not change, okay? But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Okay, so we're supposed to be meditating on the word day and night. Personally, the season I'm in is every day, bro. Like, it's... And see, one thing I noticed about being on this narrow path for a long time, I meditate on God's word unknowingly, like all day unknowingly. Like there's always verses that's flowing through my head, bro. And I give all praise to the most high. Also, you know, the reason why that happens is because I, I studied to show myself a group. It wasn't like I just, I never read the Bible, but I have God and I just know all these verses. I studied to show myself a group. Every situation I go through life, but not just the bad times, the good times too, you know, not just the evil, the bad times, I'm talking about the good times too. There's always a Bible verse that correlates to what I'm going through. And this is how you know this is the word of God. This is how you know God speaks to us through his word, okay? So, yes, now I'm going to read uh, Psalms chapter 1, which a lot of you guys already know this verse, but it's just good to remember to go over this one. You know, for those who don't know, it says, Blessed is a man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, Okay? Didn't I just put that as number three? Didn't I just put that as number three? Like I said, all this correlates to it, guys, giving up your sin. Blessed is a man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor seat in the seat of the scornful. Okay? But his delight is in the law, is in the law of the Lord. Okay? Remember, Christians tell you the law is done away with. Okay, but Psalms tell me, Psalms 1 tells me the other, the other thing. This is why, guys, study to show yourself approved. Okay, even what I'm saying, make sure you back well, everything I'm saying, even though I'm backing up with the scripture, make sure that you're making every person you're watching or to church that you're going to, make sure they're backing up with the word. Okay, because Christians they will tell you a lot of things. Okay, so but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. Woo! 
Ooh, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the, in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay, so it says, so we know what happens to the godly. We know what happens to the person who meditates on the law of God, okay? Who does not stand in the way of sinners and, and the ungodly, or the seed, the scornful, okay? So that man will be blessed. But the ungodly are not so, but as a chaff which the wind driveth away. Okay, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Yes, okay, so... The Bible has, so I can, guys, I can go over 30 verses that talks about meditating, okay? Like I said, I'm, I'm glad that sister said that. She said Christians will tell you that meditating is unlearned. Oh, yeah, they will tell you that. The unlearned will. Yep. Uh, what's up? Tazmach says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Yes. Yep. There you go, bro. You stay on You stay on fire with that, with that sword, bro. Yes, sir. Um, someone says, does, wait, let me read this one. It says, does isolation lengthen from willful sin? When I'm not willfully sinning, even though I'm isolated, I feel progression. But in my isolation, when I willfully sin, I feel as though I'm not progressing. Uh, when I'm isolation, I feel like I'm, I'm, it's easier not to sin. That's why I feel like God put me in isolation seasons because it was easier for me not to get tempted when I was weak at the time, when I wasn't as knowledgeable, when I didn't have the wisdom. Uh, when I was more vulnerable for spiritual attack, he put me in the isolation scene so I wouldn't willfully sin. So for me, it's the opposite. Okay, I'm right. we're all different. But for me, when I'm in the isolation season, sin is not even on my mind, bro. Sin is not even on my mind. So that I can't I can't answer that because I, for me, it's the opposite. If you feel like you're more in sin with your isolation season, then, you know, talk to God about that. Uh, he said, Tazmach said, meditating, on the word is advocate many times throughout the Bible, front and back. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, people will tell you that that oh, it's demonic and stuff like that. Like, man, that's crazy. Someone says, "Mark, you cooking?" <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Jake, for becoming a member. Someone says, "I definitely noticed that faith without works is dead." Yeah. No pride. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Yep. A lot of people are quick to speak and uh, not so quick to listen. That's, that's a lot of people. So much of the Pharisee spirit. Yeah, Leah. Yep, that's the Pharisee spirit. And you guys got to understand, too, about the Pharisee spirit. It works through not just men, but also women, too. The Pharisee spirit is uh, it's, it's roaming around these religious people, man. Definitely roaming around them, using them like puppets. Okay, so check this out, guys. These are the uh, things. If you just sinned, this is how to overcome. Let me move this so you guys can see it better. Says that, and hereby we do know him if we keep his commandments. Yep. Okay, let me go over this real quick for this. Just on joining. If you haven't already, make sure you guys hit the like button. Okay, number one is to confess your sin and to forsake it, which just comes down to repenting. Okay. Number two is fasting and prayer. Okay. Water fast, dry fast, dental fast. If you just not joining, I went over that. So if you guys want to go over that somewhere within the 10, 20, 30 minute mark. Number three is giving up the worldly and godly friends and family, those people who are tempting you to sin. Okay, number four is give your life to Christ, surrender, don't be lukewarm. Okay, if you're lukewarm, you're never going to be over, able to overcome the enemy. Okay, the Bible even says that if you're lukewarm, God will spit you out. Okay, number five is put on the full armor of God and be ready. Be ready for the schemes of the enemy. Be ready for the devil to attack because he's going to attack. All right, number six is let the Holy Spirit take over. All right, let the Holy Spirit activate and through your obedience, man. Through your obedience. Let, me, let me put this verse right here, guys. I'm going to read it in a bit. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. All right, and number, number seven is to meditate on the word of God, okay? Meditate day and night. This is going to be very good when it comes to when you, whenever you feel like your mind is getting attacked, you got to combat that through meditating on God's word. So let me read this verse for you guys real quick. This is in Romans chapter Romans chapter 5, verse 19, right? Yep, okay. So it says, for one man's, for, sorry, for by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be righteous. Okay, so shall many be made righteous. Okay, so through your obedience, you could win souls over. And through your disobedience, for you saying your woeful sin, you're just going to keep people to be just like you.
Okay, you're gonna keep people to be like a, a sinner, that's someone who's a willfully a willful sin. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna pin that so you guys can see that. I'm gonna pin that so y'all can see that real quick. Uh, C. Carter says, Mark, can you make a video on what happens after you cut everyone off and move into your next season? Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be a chosen one video. I'm, I could do that. I could do that definitely in the future. Yes, thank you so much for Socrates. Thank you, man. Uh, I belong to Jesus. Thank you so much. Quality time says James chapter four verse seven to ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put that on the board too because that's a good one. Let me see if I have any space. Uh, I'll put it right here. I belong to Jesus. Says I love you guys. Love you too, man. Thank you so much, bro. Uh, Luke said or Luco says you have to stay busy during the isolation season. Because idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. Proverbs chapter six percent, or sorry, Proverbs chapter sixteen to twenty-seven. Yeah, you gotta stay busy, stay active. You know, as a man, find something to do. If, literally, if you don't have something to do, the first thing that pops up in my mind: start working out, get a bike, um, get a scooter. I don't know, like uh, work, go to the gym, get gym membership, or start buying weights, or buy dumbbells, or whatever you have to do. Just stay busy, stay active. Okay, because yeah, that's true, man. I don't mind this devil's playground. I believe that. When you're just stagnant and just staying still, like you're more prone to get attacked when you're not busy. You know, as a man, a man's supposed to be working. Adam was always working until, you know, what happened. Until, you know, the fall of man. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Some uh, Wolfgang said, love you, love you too, bro. Uh, <laughs> Flex Your Fruit says, woo-hoo, still going, Mark. I went out and did some garden work real quick. That's what's up. Yeah, stay busy, man. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. All praises. But thank you guys so much for guys watching. If you guys have already, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, share this video. This is how to overcome if, uh, your sin, how, you know, how to overcome uh, if you just sin. All of this, guys, it's all going to work out in your favor, I'm telling you. And it all comes down to your obedience, okay? It all comes down to repenting. Right? And, you know, now you, when we repent, I can make this very clear. It's not you crying in the corner and telling God, I'm sorry, but you're, not, you're still doing the sin that you committed. Repenting is you fully turn away from it, and you have, and you have a godly sorrow, which works to repentance, which talks about in Corinthians. Okay, so that's what it's all about, having a godly sorrow. And that could also be on the board, too. Yep, I could definitely put that one on the board. Godly sorrow. All right, so hope you guys got edified from this one. This is how to overcome. Like I said, I fell a month ago. I fell. This is how I got back up, guys. This is living proof. This is just a testimony. It is all just a testimony, guys. So check this one out. I love you guys so much. If you guys want more live streams, like hour-long live streams, just let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments, man. Someone says, Mark, is it okay to write songs? Absolutely. Of course it's, it's okay, as long as it's not like representing the devil. Because your music can either rep the most high or it can rep the devil. So ask yourself that. What is your music representing? Uh, thank you so much, Courtney. She says, I just wanted to share this heartwarming Bible verse with everyone. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. Yes, absolutely. That's a great verse. Thank you so much. Um, one of y'all's notes says, Facts, we're all going after one after this too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's what's I am. After this, I'm, well, I actually got to ed- I gotta do some editing. So, uh, making content, guys, takes a lot of my time, man. It takes a lot of energy. Especially to have a baby, too. My sleep be kind of low now. But I'm going to end this. I'm out. Peace.